The CNA dies in a wreck caused by a sinkhole in southern Indiana. The study finds higher nursing home staffing levels produce fewer flu hospitalizations, and OIG background checks weed out up to 8% of unqualified long-term care job applicants. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, June 5th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. A sinkhole opened on Interstate 265 in southern Indiana, leading to a five-vehicle crash that left two people dead and three people hospitalized. A CNA was among the dead. Christina Coy, 36, and Douglas Borders, 42, of Scottsburg, were within the chain reaction crash and were pronounced dead at the scene. Christina was a CNA at Lake Point Village in Scottsburg. The company said in a statement that employees were devastated over the death of a valued member of the caregiving team. Quote, Christina was a dedicated certified nurse aide, making a difference in the lives of the residents she selflessly served each day, Cherie Davis of Lake Point wrote. She continued, Christina was a part of our family and she will truly be missed by all she worked with. They were laid to rest last Thursday. They left behind four children. Increasing staffing levels can help cut down on flu and pneumonia-related hospitalizations, according to a new study published in Open Forum Infectious Diseases. Led by researchers at Brown University School of Public Health, a team examined three years of Medicare claims for nearly 3 million long-term and short-stay residents. The investigators calculated study subjects' risk of developing pneumonia or influenza that led to hospitalization, looking for facility characteristics that drove the risk down. Looking at short-stay patients, 52.6% of the facilities had one or more hospitalizations for pneumonia or influenza, while that chance of hospitalization jumped to 87.6% in long-stay populations. Homes with lower risk had more licensed independent practitioners, higher rates of staff per resident per day, and fewer antipsychotic prescriptions. We'll be back right after this break. CNA TV. Memberships have changed over the years. This has been your long-term care news update. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of NACA. CNA TV. Don't miss out on any of the great programming on CNA TV. Subscribe today. A review of a 10-state program that supports background check capabilities found that they eliminate up to 8% of long-term care job applicants. The Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General completed surveys and audited grant documentation and financial reports from 2013 and 2016 to check participation levels and screening results. Seven of 10 states implemented all or most of the requirements for full participation. And all the OIG review found that of about 1.6 million background checks, about 80,000, or 5%, resulted in determinations of ineligibility. The National Background Check Program provides grants to states to develop systems to conduct background checks of state and federal criminal history, records for prospective long-term care employees. OIG has recommended that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services encourage states to fully implement its program requirements to prevent individuals with disqualifying histories such as convictions for patient abuse, patient neglect, and theft from patients from being hired to care for its beneficiaries. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.